Congratulations on your purchase of the Phoenix Injector, the finest and most versatile tools for bleeding and flushing brake and clutch hydraulic systems. This video provides all of the information you will need to maximize the advantages the Phoenix Injector has to offer. It is divided into the following sections. The Phoenix Injector and its accessory modules. Brake bleeding with the Phoenix Injector. Using the Universal Cap Adapter. Clutch bleeding with the Phoenix Injector. Other uses for the Phoenix Injector. First, we'll quickly introduce you to the Phoenix Injector and its accessory modules. The primary function of each Phoenix Injector model is identical. It is a sophisticated hand pump capable of directly pumping liquids and air from a 20-inch vacuum to over 100 PSI. When the handle is depressed, fluid is injected through the outlet. Because of the inherent hydraulic advantage, the Phoenix injector can generate pressures to 160 PSI, depending on model. The spring-loaded handle, when released automatically, draws fluid into the chamber, readying the injector for the next stroke. Each stroke can be metered using a manual adjustment. Depending on model, the return spring force is adjustable. The 10-pack module contains the basic equipment required to perform RFI, pressure and vacuum bleeding, or flush. Bottle caps are included, which attach to 90% of all brake fluid containers. The Smart Pack module is the most popular. It contains the same basic equipment plus high-tech rotating couplers, bottle pack, and additional adapters to attach to all known bleeder valves. Now let's provide a quick overview of the Smart Pack module. The bottle pack utilizes a graduated fluid container equipped with snap lock or lure lock rotating quick couplers. The bottle pack is equipped with a bottle holder and magnetic securing device. The two quick couplers in the bottle pack allow the use of fluid recirculation to fill the Phoenix injector with fluid without any fluid loss. Snap lock couplers utilize an O-ring seal and swivel independently to prevent kinking and twisting of the lines. Simply insert and with a twisting motion, snap lock couplers together. Rotating lure lock couplers utilize rotating collar to prevent kinking and twisting of the lines. Simply insert and with a twisting motion, lock couplers together. Do not over tighten. Bleeder adapters are provided to connect to all the external bleeder valves. The assembled adapters are the most commonly used. Extra adapters are provided for custom applications. Taper tips provide access to clutch slave units that do not have conventional bleeder valves. Universal port adapter, or UPA, is included to bench bleed master or slave cylinders and pressure bleed or flush the hydraulic system. Bottle caps are provided with a lure lock quick coupler bottle vent, and pickup tube that will attach to most brake fluid containers. Capture assembly is used to attach the bleeder valve to a capture container. This is used to capture fluid when pedal flushing or pressure bleeding. A check valve in the assembly allows fluid flow in one direction. A snap to lure adapter allows all lure lock adapters to mate with snap lock assemblies. Taper adapter will attach bleeder adapters to hose sizes from 3 16 to 7 16 ID. Lure plugs will prevent fluid leakage from lure assemblies when not in use. To prevent the bottle from tipping during use, route the tubing through the magnet belt clip as shown. This will keep the bottle vertical when the tubing is pulled. Failure to route tubing in this method can cause the bottle to tip, exposing pickup tube to air. The black coupler or ring is used to draw fluid for RFI and pressure uses. It is also used to capture fluid for vacuum or other uses. The white coupler or ring is only used for fluid recirculation. During recirculation, the other coupler is also attached. Let's start by looking at what the tool offers the technician when it comes to performing brake system bleeding and flushing. 
The process of bleeding and flushing a brake system is actually two processes, not one. Flushing the system involves removing as much of the old brake fluid as possible. This is necessary because of what happens to brake fluid over time. Brake fluid is hygroscopic. This means it absorbs moisture. Moisture is absorbed through rubber parts, such as brake hoses, caliper seals, and wheel cylinder cups. The moisture lowers the brake fluid's boiling point. This is why brake systems must be flushed periodically. Follow the manufacturer's recommendations where available. If not available, most experts agree 24 months or 24,000 miles is a good rule of thumb to follow. Bleeding the system is the process of removing any air that has entered the hydraulic system. Bleeding the brake system is most commonly associated with changing a hydraulic component, such as a caliper. It is very important for proper system operation that both a bleed and flush are performed. If only a bleed is done, the old fluid in the system will continue to cause internal corrosion to the hydraulic components. If the boiling point gets low enough and the brake fluid boils, it will cause a condition called brake fade. This is where the brake fluid becomes a gas. When the fluid becomes a gas, it compresses, which causes the brake pedal to go to the floor, causing the driver to lose some or all braking. This is why regular flushing of the system is necessary. What most technicians have found is that not one bleeding method works on all vehicles. Because of this, the use of any one of the four methods or a combination of them may be necessary to achieve a firm pedal. This is where the Phoenix injector excels. Because the Phoenix injector can provide both positive and negative pressures, it is a pressure and vacuum bleeder, while at the same time allowing the technician to take advantage of the RFI process on many brake systems. All this in one easy to use tool. Phoenix Systems has had extensive research conducted on the process of brake bleeding and has incorporated the results of this research into procedures which ensure the best possible job is done in the shortest time possible. The following section outlines the proper use of the Phoenix injector when performing hydraulic brake service. Because of the many different brake system configurations in use today, there is no one way to bleed all systems. The following procedures will apply to the majority of the vehicles in use today. Vehicles are grouped into one of two categories based on the design of the hydraulic system. The first group of vehicles can be identified as those having open top plastic reservoirs. The design of the master cylinder on these vehicles allows for the system to be pressure bled very easily using the Phoenix injector. The first step in bleeding these vehicles after the reservoir is drained is to install a brake pedal depressor so that the brake pedal is depressed approximately one inch. This step is one of the results of the research that Phoenix Systems has had done. What was discovered is that regardless of which type of pressure bleeder you use, the low pressure area of the primary and secondary pistons is not affected unless the brake pedal is depressed. If the brake pedal is not depressed, the fluid path is from the reservoir through the vent port and then to the wheels. This leaves a large volume of old fluid in the system. The added step of depressing the brake pedal moves the primary cup seals past the vent ports. This changes the fluid path. The fluid now flows from the reservoir through the replenishing port over the primary cup seal and then to the wheels. This step ensures all the old fluid is removed from the master cylinder. To prepare the tool for pressure bleeding, begin by draining the old fluid from the master cylinder reservoir. Next. Attach the vacuum side coupler to the black bottle coupler of the new fluid source. Then attach the injector side coupler to the capture container. Stroke the injector handle slowly to pump the old fluid out of the pickup hose until only new fluid is in the tool. Now remove the injector outlet hose and replace with the universal port adapter. Refill the new fluid source container if necessary. Open the bleeder on the first wheel in the bleeding sequence and attach the capture container making sure to use the one-way check valve. The one-way check valve only allows fluid to travel from the bleeder to the capture tank. 
preventing air from entering the system. Next, insert the UPA into the section of the reservoir that supplies the wheel being bled. Stroke the injector handle slowly. This creates pressure in the system and forces the old fluid and air out of the open bleeder into the capture container. Close the bleeder screw of the wheel being bled and repeat these steps at each remaining wheel until all the air is removed. Complete the procedure by filling the master cylinder to the proper level. Depending on the system design, there may be an additional step that needs to be performed before the system is bled. On systems where the master cylinder is mounted at an angle, there is a chance for air to be trapped in the end of the master cylinder if the outlet is not at the end of the bore. Most master cylinders are designed so that the outlets of the pressure chambers are at the highest point in the master cylinder. But there are a number of designs where this is not so. There is no way to tell by looking at the master cylinder where the outlet is located. To prevent air from being trapped, raise the rear of the vehicle until the master cylinder is nearly level. Extreme caution should be used not to raise the vehicle too high and put it at an unsafe condition or possibly damage the vehicle. With the vehicle in this position, bleed the master cylinder outlet starting with the secondary side first. Crack the line loose and then use the Phoenix injector to apply pressure to the system. Close the fitting as you complete the stroke. Now perform the same steps on the primary portion of the master cylinder. Once the master has been bled, then the vehicle can be raised normally and the steps outlined for pressure bleeding used. The second group of vehicles are those that have either single inlet reservoirs or cast iron body master cylinders with the reservoir as part of the casting. The single inlet master cylinders can be pressure bled using one of Phoenix Systems accessories, the Universal Cap Adapter, or UCA. We'll cover its use a little later. If the vehicle being bled falls into this category, use vacuum or RFI bleeding. To perform vacuum bleeding, like pressure bleeding, make sure the master cylinder is full before bleeding the system. Drain and clean the reservoir where possible. Take note of the amount of fluid that was removed. You will use this to avoid draining too much fluid from the reservoir during the bleed process. Fill to the full level with new brake fluid. Raise the vehicle to a suitable work height. Starting with the first wheel in the bleed sequence, open the bleeder screw. If the bleeder screw is loose fitting, then remove it and apply a film of silicone lubricant to the threads. Attach the vacuum side of the tool to the bleeder using the appropriate adapter. Attach the output end of the tool to an empty capture container. Slowly stroke the handle to create a vacuum in the system. Depending on the bleeder screw fit, it is normal to see some air in the fluid flow even if none is in the system. The better the seal you form with the silicone lube, the less air you will see. Bleed the wheel until no air is seen or the fluid is clean. Repeat the process at the remaining wheels. Monitor the fluid level in the capture tank so as not to remove too much fluid and introduce air. If necessary, refill the reservoir during the process. Once complete, test the pedal and if firm, test drive the vehicle after completing the job. Caution: Never drive a vehicle with an unsafe brake pedal. The steps that have been outlined cover the majority of the vehicles in use today. If the vehicle's bleed process involves additional steps, such as bleeding the modulator, add those to the steps given. Where the procedures call for pressure bleeding, substitute the Phoenix injectors pressure bleeding or vacuum bleeding, depending on the type of system. Because of the design of the tool, it allows the technician the ability to perform a number of unique processes. The first of these is what is known as reverse fluid injection. This patented process is an exclusive of the Phoenix injector. Here's how it works. Reverse fluid injection, or RFI, takes advantage of the laws of physics. 
Air rises in fluid. The Phoenix injector injects fluid at low pressure through the low points, the slave bleeder valves, and pushes the air up through the master cylinder reservoir. To perform RFI bleeding, first drain and clean the master cylinder reservoir. If necessary, fill the reservoir before draining so an accurate measure of fluid can be taken. Note the amount of fluid removed. This will be necessary to avoid overfilling the master cylinder during the RFI bleeding process. For vehicles with tilted master cylinders, raise the rear of the vehicle to allow the master cylinder to sit higher at the primary end or firewall than at the secondary end. This will allow the air to exit the vent ports. Remember, caution is to be used when raising the vehicle to avoid an unsafe condition or vehicle damage. If the master cylinder cannot be positioned in this manner, get it to at least a point where the body is level. If this cannot be accomplished, then combine RFI with pressure or vacuum bleeding to get the best results. Once the master cylinder has been positioned, then begin the bleeding process at the first wheel in the bleeding sequence. Connect the output end of the tool to the bleeder and the input end to the fluid supply container, making sure it is full. With the tool connected, open the bleeder screw and then slowly stroke the handle. Continue this at the wheel, giving three to four strokes. Once complete, remove the adapter from the bleeder and let the wheel cylinder burp or gravity bleed. Close the bleeder. Repeat this process at each of the wheels, remembering to watch the amount of fluid being used. If the procedure is repeated, it may be necessary to drain the reservoir. At the end of each wheel bleed, remember to allow the caliper, or wheel cylinder, to burp, or gravity bleed. Once complete, check and adjust the master cylinder fluid level and test the pedal. If firm, test drive. Caution. Never drive a vehicle with an unsafe pedal. Some technicians are concerned about the possibility of pushing contaminants upstream to the brake valving, ABS modulator, or master cylinder during RFI bleeding. Phoenix has had extensive research done in this area. The main difference between the RFI process and that of pushing caliper pistons back in without opening the bleeders is the pressures being produced and the amount of fluid movement. Now we see the RFI process taking place while being able to see the pressure being generated at the master cylinder. As you can see, when used properly, the pressures are well below 10 PSI. Compared to the process of pushing a caliper piston back without opening the bleeder screw, watch the pressures as they exceed 90 PSI. In addition, 10 times more fluid is forced back in a single stroke than with the Phoenix injector. Pressures this high, as well as large amounts of fluid, can disturb the sludge and corrosion that is built up in the system. This video shows the old fluid from the wheels entering the master cylinder as the piston is pushed back. This fluid could carry contaminants back into the brake valving, ABS modulator, or master cylinder that could do damage to the seals or internal parts. Another reason why RFI has little or no chance of forcing contaminants back upstream is that RFI is only done after the system has been flushed. Flushing will remove the majority of the contaminants from the system. In addition to the RFI bleeding process, Phoenix Systems has developed two other methods that can aid the technician in performing effective bleed and flushes. The first of these methods is called pulse generation. Because of the unique design of the Phoenix injector, it allows the technician to create pulses in the system. This pulse generation loosens the surface tension that the air bubbles in the system have with the various brake parts. Air that normally might have remained in the system is allowed to exit because of these pulses. Pulse generation can be done when either pressure or RFI bleeding. To perform the procedure, adjust the stroke setting on the tool to 2 to 3 milliliters. Using quick, short injections, inject 2 to 3 milliliters of fluid approximately 3 to 4 times per second. Inject a total of 10 to 15 short strokes, making sure not to overfill the reservoir or capture tank, depending on which method is being used. 
finish the bleeding cycle with one full steady injection stroke. On front to rear split hydraulic systems, there is an additional procedure available when using the Phoenix injector. When replacing calipers or wheel cylinders on vehicles equipped with a front to rear split hydraulic system, you can utilize a cross bleed procedure to remove the majority of the air, making the remaining bleed and flush procedure easier. To perform a cross bleed after caliper or wheel cylinder replacement, install the brake pedal depressor so that the brake pedal is depressed about one inch. This will prevent fluid from returning to the master cylinder. Open the bleeder valve on one of the calipers or wheel cylinders and attach the capture container the same as you would for pressure bleeding. Make sure the one-way check valve is installed. With the tool prepared for RFI bleeding, open the bleeder on the opposite caliper or wheel cylinder. Attach the output end of the tool to the bleeder. Using slow, steady strokes, inject fluid into the system. The fluid will not be able to return to the master cylinder because of the pedal depressor. It will exit out the other caliper or wheel cylinder. This will both bleed and flush this portion of the hydraulic circuit, making it easier to complete the procedure. When through, allow the caliper or wheel cylinder that was used to input the fluid to gravity bleed. Complete the bleed and flush of the system using whichever method best fits the system being serviced. A variation of the cross bleed is the quick flush. Quick flush is the same as cross bleed except the calipers or wheel cylinders have not been serviced. The quick flush process allows the circuit from one wheel to the other to be flushed completely. To perform a quick flush, follow the steps outlined for the cross bleed. The Phoenix injector can also perform a cylinder flush on either wheel cylinders or calipers. The cylinder flush is not meant to replace component service, but allows the technician to remove sludge and debris from the wheel cylinders or calipers. To perform a cylinder flush on a caliper, disconnect the steel line from the brake hose where possible. If not, remove the hose from the caliper and remove the caliper from its mounting. Now, with the injector set up for RFI bleeding, open the bleeder screw and connect the tool's output end to it. Caution: Safety glasses should be worn during this procedure. Aggressively inject fluid using six to eight strokes. A swirl pattern is created, which lifts debris and sludge out of the cylinder. Close the bleeder screw and reattach the brake hose. Once complete with the cylinder flushing, Finish the bleed and flush of the system using whichever method is best suited for the system being serviced. The cylinder flush for wheel cylinders is the same as for calipers, except the brake line will be removed from the wheel cylinder. Replace the line with a short piece of brake line and attach the capture tank to it. Follow the same procedures for calipers to complete the process. One of the most effective uses of the tool is in bench bleeding master cylinders. Even the most difficult master cylinder can be bench bled in minutes. We will cover the bench bleeding of the following styles of master cylinders. Conventional cast iron tandem master cylinder and the single inlet plastic reservoir type. The GM two and four outlet quick take up master cylinder. The Ford quick take up master cylinder. The goal of bench bleeding the master cylinder is to remove all of the air in the shortest time possible. The Phoenix injector is unparalleled in accomplishing this goal. To bleed the GM quick take up two or four outlet master cylinder, begin by mounting the master cylinder in a vise so that the master cylinder body is level. Install the master cylinder bleeding kit in each of the outlets of the master cylinder. On the four outlet master cylinder, Install plugs in the lower outlets. Fill the reservoir half full with new brake fluid. Attach a universal port adapter to output side of gun. Vacuum or input side of gun routed to new fluid container. Push the master cylinder piston in approximately one inch with appropriate tool to expose low pressure chamber to both vent and replenishing ports. With the tool set up for pressure bleeding, Pressure bleed the secondary portion of the master cylinder. Use four to six full steady strokes 
or until no air is seen in the bleeder kit hose. For bleeding the primary side of the master cylinder, move the master cylinder body to an angled position in the vise, or the top of the reservoir level. Now, prepare tool for RFI bleeding. Attach the output of the tool to the primary bleeder kit adapter. Leave the piston in its rest position. While using slow, steady strokes, bleed the primary side of the master cylinder. Because of the size of the low pressure chamber, this will take approximately 12 to 15 strokes to remove all of the air. Watch the primary reservoir for any signs of air as the process is completed. When complete, disconnect connector from tool output and let the hose gravity bleed until a solid stream of fluid is seen. Position the bleeder hose into the primary reservoir to prevent draining. It should be noted, many of these master cylinders are mounted at an angle on the vehicle. The procedures given earlier should be used on these vehicles once the master cylinder is installed. When dealing with the GM4 outlet quick take up master cylinder that has the built in pressure differential switch, there is an alternative bleeding method to raising the rear of the vehicle. These master cylinders can be identified by the presence of a hex plug located at the end of the master cylinder. The design of these master cylinders allows air to become trapped in the secondary portion of the master cylinder. To remove the air from this style master cylinder, simply loosen the plug until fluid flow is established. With the plug loose, pressure bleed the secondary end of the master cylinder. Tighten the plug as you end your last bleed stroke. The primary side of the master cylinder can be bled at the line without leveling the master cylinder. Complete the bleed process following the recommended bleed procedure. Bleeding the cast style tandem and single inlet plastic reservoir type master cylinders. Begin by mounting the master cylinder in a vise in a level position. Install the master cylinder bleeding kit into both secondary and primary master cylinder outlets. Route the bleeder kit hoses back into the reservoir. Fill the reservoir with new fluid. Prepare the tool for vacuum bleeding. Connect the input end of the tool to the secondary master cylinder outlet. Before beginning, depress the master cylinder piston about a half an inch so that the primary cup seals are past the vent ports. This will ensure that the low pressure area of the master cylinder is filled during the bleeding process. Using slow, steady strokes, apply a vacuum to the master cylinder. Continue this process until no air is seen exiting the master cylinder outlet. Keep an eye on the fluid level and refill if necessary. Once the secondary portion of the master cylinder is bled, route the bleeder kit hose back into the secondary reservoir. Repeat this procedure with the primary portion of the master cylinder. Note, if the master cylinder is mounted at an angle, then follow the appropriate steps when installing the master cylinder on the vehicle. Bleeding the Ford Quick Take Up Master Cylinder. Plug the lower outlets of the master cylinder. To bleed this style master cylinder, use vacuum bleeding on the secondary portion of the master cylinder while the master cylinder body is in a level position. Use RFI on the primary side with the master cylinder body at a slight angle. Complete the process by allowing the primary outlet to gravity bleed until no air is seen. Note, if the master cylinder is mounted at an angle, use appropriate steps to remove air when installed on the vehicle. Phoenix Systems has a number of accessories available for the Phoenix injector that enhance its usefulness. The first of these is the Universal Cap Adapter, or UCA. The UCA allows the Phoenix injector to be used for pressure bleeding single inlet master cylinders and to allow for automatic fluid replenishment during vacuum bleeding, as well as the ability to attach a capture container during the RFI process to handle any fluid overflow. The UCA's unique design bladder allows it to fit virtually all single inlet master cylinder inlets. The UCA consists of the following main parts. 
the bladder, which expands to adapt the UCA to the inlet of the master cylinder. The spring-loaded retaining clips, which secure the UCA to the inlet neck of the master cylinder. The stepped safety shield. The position of the slide valve and relief valve screw allow the bladder to be inflated and deflated, and also allows the master cylinder to be pressurized. The pressure gauge displays the pressure of the bladder or system being bled or tested depending on the position of the slide valve. The stepped safety shield and retaining clip can be adjusted independently. This allows for greater versatility in adapting to various neck sizes and the various hose connections, which will be explained shortly. First, we will cover the use of the UCA when pressure bleeding single inlet master cylinders. Make sure the slide valve is in the system or left position and begin by turning the relief valve adjusting screw clockwise until firm, then push slide valve across to the bladder circuit. If necessary, drain enough fluid from the reservoir to allow the UCA to be inserted into the neck. It may be necessary to adjust the safety shield and retaining clip so the bladder is correctly positioned. Insert the bladder end of the UCA into the neck while depressing the spring-loaded retaining clip. Once inserted, release the neck clamps, making sure they secure to the reservoir neck. Prepare the injector for pressure bleeding. Connect the output end of the injector to the system inlet connection on the UCA. This is the one to the right with the Schrader valve. Using slow, steady strokes, Inflate the bladder with brake fluid while watching the pressure gauge. Increase the bladder pressure to approximately 25 PSI. This is usually all that is needed to form a seal. If a seal has not been established with the reservoir neck, increase the pressure slowly until one is formed. Caution! Do not inflate the UCA bladder beyond 30 PSI. If a seal cannot be formed, then the vehicle being serviced will have to be vacuum bled. Once a seal has been established, push the slide valve to the left in the system position. The bladder will remain inflated and the gauge will read system pressure. Disconnect the injector from the system inlet. Using a lure connector, attach the injector to the reservoir fluid inlet as shown. Attach the capture container to the first wheel in the bleed sequence, making sure to use the one-way check valve. Open the bleeder valve. Using slow, steady strokes, apply pressure to the system. Repeat this process at each of the wheels in the sequence until all air has been removed. Connect a capture container to the relief valve outlet to collect the bladder or system fluid. With the slide valve in the system position, Unscrew the relief valve counterclockwise until system pressure reads zero. Any system pressure will be dispersed through the relief valve outlet. With the system pressure at zero PSI, the slide valve can then be pushed across the bladder circuit, deflating the bladder. The bladder fluid will also be dispersed through the relief valve outlet. Once bleeding has been completed, disconnect the injector's fluid outlet from the UCA. Depress the spring-loaded neck clips and remove the UCA from the vehicle. Fill the reservoir as necessary. To use the UCA to allow for automatic fluid replenishment during vacuum bleeding, attach the UCA according to the previous steps. Next, connect the new fluid source to the fluid inlet of the UCA as shown. This will allow fluid to be drawn into the reservoir when needed during vacuum bleeding avoiding the need to refill the reservoir during the process. The UCA can also be used during the RFI bleeding process to avoid overfilling the reservoir. Simply connect an empty capture container to the fluid inlet of the UCA and proceed with the RFI process. The Phoenix injector is unmatched in bleeding all styles of hydraulic clutch systems. When bleeding traditional design hydraulic clutch systems, you will generally find that RFI is the most effective method. Perform RFI using the same procedures that were covered in the brake section. Continue the process until all air has been removed. Some Ford and GM slave cylinders utilize a recessed bleed screw. For this style of slave cylinder, 
Loosen the bleed screw and use a taper tip to inject fluid into the small passage alongside of the bleed screw. Remember to allow a slave cylinder to burp or gravity bleed to complete the process. As with brake systems, some clutch systems mount the master cylinder in a position that will allow air to become trapped. These systems can be identified by the orientation of the master cylinder. The clutch master cylinder on these vehicles points down at the end. This design allows for air to be trapped at the highest point. Note, where possible, raise the front of the vehicle to bring the master cylinder to a more level position. To bleed these systems, begin by using RFI combined with pulse generation. Using quick, short injections of 2 to 3 milliliters, 2 to 4 times per second, alternating with aggressive full injection strokes. Note, you may have to drain the reservoir and repeat, or use the universal cap adapter where possible. If this procedure does not yield the proper clutch pedal, continue by having an assistant depress the clutch pedal halfway down. This closes the master cylinder check valve. With the clutch pedal still depressed, use RFI to build pressure in the system. Note, it will be necessary to hold adapter onto bleeder screw during this procedure due to the high pressures being generated. Caution, wear safety glasses. Have the assistant slowly release the clutch pedal while maintaining pressure in the system. When the pedal is released, opening the check valve, a pressure surge will force trapped air out of the system. Repeat this procedure several times. Occasionally, the clutch pedal may still not be firm after these procedures. Follow these steps to complete the procedure. Where possible, loosen the master cylinder from the firewall and tip upward. Note. The front of the vehicle can be lifted to aid in this process. The following procedure involves the removal of a difficult to access retaining clip. Use this procedure only as a last resort. Remove the retaining clip which holds the piston in place. With the clip removed, the piston can be quickly removed and reinstalled. Fluid will leak out and the air bubble will be forced out. Remember, when installing a new master cylinder, the clutch system can be bled prior to bolting the master cylinder to the firewall. In addition to the uses already covered, the Phoenix injector can be used in a variety of other ways. The Phoenix injector can be used anywhere where negative or positive pressure has to be applied to a part or system for service or diagnosis. Lead and flush motorcycle brakes and fill fork tubes. Meter and inject almost any liquids and air. Flush electronic and CIS injectors. Leak test hydraulic components like automatic transmissions. Lead and flush power steering systems like Delco. Test pressure and vacuum sensors. Power flush and diagnose carburetor circuits. Test and diagnose emission control systems. Caution. If the injector is used for both petroleum-based and brake fluids, it is critical that the injector be thoroughly cleaned before using with each fluid, or system contamination will occur. To clean the injector, run denatured alcohol through it until all residue has been removed, and then flush the injector using whichever fluid is going to be used. Note, do not allow extended contact with solvents in system tubing. For additional information regarding the different uses and operating instructions for your Phoenix injector, see the user's manual. Phoenix Systems delivers innovative technology that works. What a concept!